Welcome to the Tribe Table. Um, this is a format um, for conversation in a safe place. And um, even though we're here at the Bentonville Filmmakers, or the Bentonville Film Festival, and interviewing filmmakers, we want you guys to just have some real conversations with us. We definitely want to hear about the movie. We also want to hear about you, because you're people in the world. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you are. You're people in the world doing awesome things um, above and beyond um, the films that you're doing. And the films are an expression of who you are, mm -hmm. but we really want to do that. So this is awesome. So Good. Okay. So, um, you know, our organization, Tribe of Women, is all about women supporting women and more good men. And so a lot of our conversations mm -hmm. are or in that context. And so when we were reviewing the films, obviously Miss Arizona stood out just a little bit. I was <laughs> like, oh my gosh, this is a tribe of women. This is awesome. <laughs> so um, tell us a little bit about the film and kind of the inspiration behind it sure. that, that's happening for you. Yes, absolutely. It absolutely is about a tribe of women start to finish. Oh, okay. It started with a tribe that I met several years ago while volunteering at a women's shelter in my town. Mm -hmm. And every town's got one. Every town has a discreet little home or two or five or 10 where um, women are, are put into a shelter when they're in um, a period of crisis. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was brought in to teach a life skills class at the shelter. And I'd written a book that, it was like kind of this book that was best-selling for graduation gifts about how to survive the real world. So they presented me as this expert speaker on all the life skills you need to know. <laughs> so I walked in, you know, thinking I knew what I was doing. And <laughs> I learned I didn't know a thing. These women taught me so much about how hard life really can be. Yeah. And um, so one of the lines from our film is, is a woman asks Miss Arizona, you know, well, what do you do if you have a felony when she's talking about your resume? Yeah. And there's questions out there that a lot of us don't know the answers to, but women have lived. And um, those women have stayed with me in, in the shelter. I taught the class over two years several times, and the women would cycle through, and then eventually I'd see them working in town, they'd get jobs, and, and we'd have this kind of just knowing smile that we'd yeah. exchange, and, and these women just embody strength. And um, my mom, Growing up in Memphis, Tennessee, she took us to shelters on the weekend and she would teach some of her classes while I would hang out with the kids and watch the kids. And, and so this is just a part of my, my upbringing is like, what can we do for people who can't necessarily do it for themselves because yeah. of fear? A lot of it's based on fear. So anyway, that's where the idea for Miss Arizona was born. And I wanted to bring it into a modern context in November 2016 of what was going on in the world with politics and with the perceptions of women in media. And, um, and then right after that, you know, the Me Too movement ushered in and, and it was just yeah. like women are finding a renewed strength. They've always had the strength, but I think finally people are listening and, and I feel like the time is right for a film like this. Yeah. That's wonderful, and 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 women are telling their stories and mm -hmm. in a in a safer place. And also, uh, you know, we've heard a lot about how social media and other mm -hmm. things kind of enable that a little bit mm -hmm. more to find your tribe and to find <laughs> find the people and the, and connect to the stories and know that you're not alone. Yeah. That you know there are other people, and even if it's a, a wink in the grocery store, like mm -hmm. hey, how's it going? Mm -hmm. I'm, I got you, <laughs> kind mm -hmm. of thing. That's Absolutely. awesome. Good. And even today on the way here, um, the. Festival Senate, we had a driver take us over to a film this morning, mm -hmm. and I got in as a gentleman, and he asked about our film, we told him briefly, the elevator pitch, mm -hmm. and he said, I have five daughters, mm -hmm. my daughter it said, um, Google her right now, Gloria Allred just represented her case, she was raped by someone affiliated with the Beach Boys, and it's a, a mm -hmm. public case that just, and she, he, he said that she had been abused, and, and we went through this um, story, and he's like, and, and this is a gentleman, and I was so happy to meet him, but he said, thank you. Thank you for telling the story. And, yes. and I mean, there's so many people out there who've been um, affected by domestic yes. violence, by assault, by yes. these um, things that we, we do have to talk about. Yeah, we do. Yeah. In order, the problem seen is the problem solved. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So your involvement in the film came about... Well, Autumn yeah. and I know each other yeah. from previous work. You're a tribe. Yes. Yeah. 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 But I, mean, I love what y'all do as far as saying, hey, we're working, supporting women, but also the good men, because I've yes. certainly had mm -hmm. some yes. amazing men. And I think to have men as a really important part of the conversation is mm -hmm. so important to get that change in there, especially when you go to places to pitch, and it is a lot of men, which is just how the industry progressed from mm -hmm. starting where women were the filmmakers to when it became a business yeah. back in the time where, I mean, women just got credit cards like 30 years ago. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, we couldn't even buy something ourselves. So to have it come, 30 years is relatively short. It's kind of crazy. Very so short. to have that progress to now a place where just now I feel like we're circling back and we will be seen as, 
you know, I mean, not that we ever weren't as equals, but there just weren't as many. You know, exactly. it's hard to find this. Exactly. We shot seventy percent department heads, or seventy percent altogether. Our casting crew were female. Were female. Excellent. That's awesome. But it was That's a unique challenge to try and find mm -hmm. people in those, not because they're not out there, but because the experience of getting those jobs hasn't been as readily available. Yes. So you can't find as many people with that experience. So it becomes a conversation of how do we make films that open up opportunities to fuel more people into these positions? Yes. So they're at the standard, the same level of experience as the men who have been doing it for the past 30 years. Mm -hmm. And we have to do it in this collective space. So we've yeah. got like women in film and then um, film power we heard about um, mm -hmm. yesterday where you, you've got this collection of people that people, you know, you can find each other. Right. That's great. And, and so that's fantastic yeah. from a, you know, technology mm -hmm. perspective, but there's also this, you know, collective voice that we have to have and sometimes it has to be just a little bit louder in order yeah. to to be heard. And, and again, your comment about, um, you know, the credit cards and we talk a lot about women in the workplace and the fact mm -hmm. like we've only been in the workforce in force for about 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's kind of mind boggling when you think about it, because even though the movements toward that and, and the strides toward that have been for a while, um, you know, we've only been able to vote for a hundred years. Like, think yeah. about that in context. The history of time. <laughs> it's crazy. My it first is. job I worked at a um, jewelry store, and I was um, started at the desk, the greeter, and yeah. then I was a salesperson, and, and I was just blown away by once a sale got over a certain amount, they had to bring a man in to close. And, and this was like 20 years ago, you know, and, and I was like, wait, 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 what? I can do this. I just yeah. made the deal, you know, let me close it. And, and it just how times have changed. And I have two daughters. She has a daughter and, and our other producer D has a daughter. We all wanted to tell stories for our women, our, our in our homes, yeah, exactly. our tribe in our homes and, and make exactly. sure that, you know, they're coming up with these lessons that you can do it. If you yeah. can see it, you can be it. You can do this. I love it. And, and to the point of children and raising and, you know, we have boys. We have boys mm -hmm. to, Absolutely. to influence, and the, um, if you say you can be it, I think that men have a challenge in, mm -hmm. in the industry of seeing good men, mm -hmm. and, and those mm -hmm. roles of what does a good man look like, and you know, do you remember the movie Mr. Mom? Love that movie. That was, like, it was, it was stereotypical, like, men don't do that, mm -hmm. and so, and men still have some of those stereotypes mm -hmm. that they are fighting against, and, mm -hmm. you know, and being staying at home, and, and we, you know, talked about this several times about you're talking about the industry and you know being a minority in the industry and so we're a minority in the workforce and then sometimes we're a minority in the industries that we work in so mm -hmm. film technology some of those things mm -hmm. so there's like a double whammy that goes on there but then you know men have some of the similar challenges that they want to stay home so you know it's yeah. like it's like where's where's the handbook where's the rule book and mm -hmm. we need to share yeah. that information it's not we can't expect husbands to like know how to do all of these things that you know we've been taught generation after generation right. so right that's there's a mutual give and take both of us are married yes. to wonderful men Good. and um and who are very supportive they both mm -hmm. are affiliated with industry my husband's a producer on this film i met michelle through her husband who directed my last feature i wrote oh. and so we are very grateful for their support mm -hmm. and and likewise we support them and what they're mm -hmm. doing and it is it's so great to find a relationship where there's a give and yeah. take there and a mutual respect mm -hmm. you have that. a beautiful tribe of human yeah. You. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Good. No, it is great. I mean, people come to LA and they're like, oh, it's so hard. People can be so mean. And I'm like, I mean, sure, but that's anywhere. And if you find those people that, you know, really connect and like yeah. supportive, I mean, I think what you're doing is so important as far as like an outreach to changing the mindset of women supporting women. And just that comment that you said about like, if you see a woman in the grocery store, like, Smile, or like, I just remember carrying my baby, and like, I have my toddler, and oranges are falling out of my bag, and like, like, I'm like, why? <laughs> like, parents are like, oh, just enjoy those days. And I'm like, or you could just help me pick up the oranges. Like, they're getting run over at this point. Like, can someone, what? Why is this happening? But like, that idea of like, it's okay to step in, and I think sometimes people feel like with the women empowering moment movement, you know, like yeah. I can do it myself. It's like, okay, I can, but yeah. also mm -hmm. I kind of
I can't because I'm a little juggling. Yeah. So it's exactly. like that ability to help each other and yeah. to accept help yeah. graciously. Accepting mm-hmm. help. Is Accepting so help is yeah. so important. And we have to also come from a place of abundance where there's enough for everybody. Because for so yes. many years in Hollywood, it was like, yeah. there's only room for one woman in this writer's room. There's only room for one woman on this set. So women were like jockeying for position. Some were, not all of them. But oh, we're jockeying yeah. for position, pushing women out, deceiving people. And, and I saw a little bit of that. And then now I feel like, well, I, I anyway, I choose to surround myself by women who believe there's enough to go around. Yes. We do better when we lift each other and bring each other along. And there isn't just one spot anymore. There's as many as we need to. And so we have to get to the place where it's not, I'm the most qualified woman. It's, I'm the most qualified person for this job. Yeah, absolutely. Like, we just have to own that and say, it's not, you're not hiring me to fill a quota. You're hiring me because I'm better than anyone else who's yeah. applying. And so that's where we have to, like, we've all relied on mentors to get to where we are, but we have to be mentors yes. for, for youth. And that's something that I do a lot of, and I speak to teen audiences a lot and feel like it's very important that we take these star high school students who are like showing some promise and and even the ones who are still finding their legs and and give them opportunities on our sets and like bring them in and show them what a tribe of strong women look like yeah. and this is something you can be a part of yeah. and I get so excited when I see my my kids I call my kids you know <laughs> find their their legs and, and like see where they're supposed to be and yeah. so yeah it's it's bringing up that the it generation. is well, and it's all the and it, sometimes it's the tough conversations, right? Mm-hmm. One of the things I love about what's happening here, and we are hearing this over and over again in interviews, is uh, the word consciousness, mm-hmm. which we use. We call you know consciousness changes cultures, mm-hmm. and um, and one of the cultures you're talking about is mean girl culture. Yes. Yeah. And and it's not you know it's it's a it's a culture that we have the choice to participate in or mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. It's not that, and I think that everybody has had a moment where they didn't know what to do in a situation and maybe they were a mean girl. Mm -hmm. So it's not like mean girl, you are a mean girl. Mm -hmm. It's whether or not you're participating in a culture Mm -hmm. or not. Because Mm -hmm. even somebody that has been a mean girl or participated in that culture in some way has a choice not to. Mm -hmm. At some point in time, we can't just label you and Mm -hmm. be like, okay, you did that, so now you are forever labeled. Mm -hmm. And so we need to give each other grace Mm -hmm. and and space to not participate in that. But it starts with the conversations Mm -hmm. that you're having. It starts with the, it starts with consciousness. Yeah, Yeah. and that's an area where film is powerful. Like, some of my friends who don't work in film, I sometimes get the idea that they think it's a very indulgent industry. And I understand, Mm -hmm. like, where that, they might be thinking that. But we think about, like, films like Mean Girls yeah. that really changed a decade. It changed a generation and identified a point, a problem that has been going on forever. Yeah. And think about how that affected the zeitgeist of women. And then you take a film like we have to talk about it because I'm so excited yes. about it. I feel pretty. So oh, I, I don't know yes. if you've seen it yet, but by yeah, Amy Schumer, this film comes out yes. and from the get go, it's all about this woman believes she's beautiful, so she is. Mm-hmm. And it was like a film I'd totally be comfortable taking my girls to. Right. They made it on purpose clean enough where I could take my 10-year-old daughter to this mm-hmm. film and feel great about it. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I haven't seen it yet. I, I think every woman it, out there, someone already yes. seen it. So good. Every it woman is. out there has good. to see it. Every child has to see this movie. I'm, I just want to like stand on a rooftop and cheer and be sure for me because this film, that the message is like, if you feel great about yourself, good. Everyone yeah. should. You are. And I love that like film has that power. Yeah. Film has that power to speak to those audiences and change the cultural mindset of a whole generation yeah. and so I'm so excited like that's what our goal is to be a part of filmmaking and sharing these messages that are powerful and well, can change the, sh- and the shift audience mindset. that you have to influence that in that mm-hmm. in that small period of time Fast. and the messages that you have to to portray are so powerful Sometimes I need to unplug. Sometimes I've got to reboot. Sometimes I just want to sleep. But I always want to connect with you. Get into Brew Moods, aromatherapy lotions powered by a mindfulness app. 